All right, well, hello there, the internet. Welcome back to another fun exclusive interview with Mike Young here from LasVegas.net. Uh, we want to welcome Stan Mullis back to the show. Stan, how you doing? Doing great. How about you guys? Doing great. Doing good. Uh, very interested in knowing what happened in Phoenix with you. I know it's one of your favorite racetracks. Uh, talk about practice a little bit as we get going here. Yeah, I absolutely love Phoenix. It's like driving a roller coaster. So um, looking forward to getting out there. And when we, we took off, car was pretty good right away in one and two. But uh, in turn three, we were down on the splitter. It was dragging the track and it was causing us to skate the nose. So I drove in with the animals behind me, the, the fast cats, and uh, went to the bottom. And the car said, I'm not having none of that. And it slid up about a groove and a half. So, um, so they figured it out and got around me. And we got in for an adjustment. And uh, it took two adjustments to get the splitter up off the track. And uh, we kept freeing the car up as well. And uh, we got it as free as I could stand it in one and two. But we still need it needed it to turn better in three and um, four is pretty easy for everybody. Um, but turn three is where we really struggled. Um, and if I had to do it over again, I uh, would have probably qualified on the high side um, simply because the car was still tight, um, which that helps if you run the high side and you can carry momentum instead of uh, scrubbing speed off and getting back to the throttle early. So. Um, but we laid down a respectable lap and uh, did the best we could and had a good showing for Share Life Vacations and LasVegas.net. Got a little TV time and yeah. didn't make the highlight reel. So that's that's a good thing. So, so what kind of adjustments do you make for that split? Are we talking a wedge or two here? Oh, man, I'm not the chassis guy, but I know they uh, they run bump springs and they, they run these little spacers in the bump springs. Um, so they were pulling out putting in spacers um allowing for more travel is that what it is yeah it just raises the nose up so they they uh i know they put in a couple of eighth inch and then uh, right before qualifying they pulled out an eighth and put in a 16th you want that splitter as low to the track as possible and sealed off without touching the track because if it touches the track it uh it takes weight off the tires and you lose grip so um so what all they did, I don't really know, but I know they they uh, made some adjustments there and and also on the track bar and freeing the car up. And then when they tape it off for qualifying, it, it frees the car up. But we just, we needed the car to turn better to, through turn three to carry that speed. And that's really the key to speed at that track. You drive off into turn three and can, can uh, get back to the throttle quickly. It makes that a long, long time on throttle, getting through the dog leg all the way back to turn one. And that's where the, that's where the speed is in that track. So um, overall, it was, it was a good day, a fun day. But uh, yeah, there were some goofy things that happened in qualifying. I don't know if you saw uh, David Starr spun out. Yeah, we're going to be interviewing him soon as well, uh, just for that very reason. I want to find out what happened. So it, and by the way, you missed by one position. The race, right? Is that what you told me? Yeah, there was there was a couple of cars that didn't didn't uh, weren't able to make the qualifying lap, and then uh, I saw when David Starr spun out, and I saw Hesemann was behind us, ran a slower lap because he had to check up for Starr. I was looking and saying, "Well, we got a shot at making this race now," but then yeah, I was thinking the same thing. I was going, "Yes!" <laughs> and they. Uh, they let David Starr have another go at it, and I've never, ever seen this happen in NASCAR, and I've been watching and driving in NASCAR for a lot of years. What I've never seen is if somebody spins out in qualifying, normally, before they take the green flag, normally what they'll do is they'll turn around and they'll, they'll go the wrong way on the track and take another run at it. But I've never seen NASCAR allow them to come in, change tires, make an adjustment, and go try it again. So um, let's review what happened first of all. So here's what it looked like on TV. So all of a sudden, uh, they flash to David Starr, who's spinning, and you hear him on the radio going, "I don't know what happened. It just it took off on me, right?" And I see another car behind him barreling up. Who has to get on the brakes? They're doing their qualifying run. I'm, and so I'm thinking, how does this even happen? Well, it appears that NASCAR sent him too early. 
Uh, and I've heard now that uh, maybe the reason why he spun out was he looked in his mirror and saw that car getting really big and <laughs> kind of stomped on it just to stay out of the person's way. And that might have been what made him spin. We'll ask him when we interview him. But yes, so he spins. He clearly ruined his tires. So not only did he get to come back later when the track was in better shape, it's warmer now, it's a little more gripped up, he's had a chance to watch some people, you know, do some qualifying laps. Now he has brand new tires as well for this effort. So he gets to go back out and indeed he makes the, makes the show, right? Which was the one position you needed to be in yourself. I believe, I believe It's the so. irony for me. I don't know about you. And, uh, you know, David Starr is a, a friend and... Uh, we don't we don't have any uh, ill will towards David Starr. Not at all. He's part of the MBM family, right? Yeah, yeah. He's part of our been teammate of mine for off and on for several years, and one of the good guys out there. So um, it was just very bizarre that you're able to start a qualifying run, spin out, flat spot. I I guess he I know he flat spotted at least two of the tires. I saw him. One of them blew out at flat spotted yeah. so bad. It was a long slide. But uh, I've never seen it where somebody can go back in and change tires. And so I, I understand why they gave uh, Hesemann a, another go at it because the track was blocked and that made sense. And uh, he made good on his second attempt as well. But uh, it was just very bizarre. One of those things you, you have to see it to believe it. Yeah. So both of them, like now his tires are warm when he gets to go back out there, right? He's in a, a little better shape himself. So it, it probably helped him going a little later as well. But that's NASCAR. I mean, you can't control the things you can't control. And it seems like you've had uh, some tough luck in that area. And by the way, so did David Starr. This was the first yeah. race that he qualified for uh, this year as well. And I'm, I'm happy for him, by the way, that he got to be in there. And, and he was doing actually quite well. He got up to 19th in that race. Uh, until he had some kind of issues and went laps down. And we'll ask him about that as well. But for Stan Mullis, what's next on, in the NASCAR world for you? We're, we're not really sure. We're looking at the schedule to see what, uh, what I can run next. Um, usually deeper in the season, there's less cars show up, so you have a better chance of qualifying. Uh, I knew that Vegas and, and Phoenix would be tough to qualify in because everybody's got their – their best efforts going forward early in the season. Um, and, you know, I, I can't blame uh, NASCAR or David Starr or anything for the reason we didn't make the race. Bottom line is we needed to pick up some speed. And for, for our team, that's a little tough. First time I'd been in a car in Vegas in uh, over a year because of COVID. And then, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to get up to speed and compete with these Guys, they are the best in the world. So it's hard to compete when you don't have the amount of seat time. Um, and when you've got a 15, 20 minute practice to try to sort everything out, it's just a lot to get done for, for somebody uh, that's not doing it every week. So, um, you know, it was just one of those goofy things that you probably, hopefully, never see again. <laughs> I <laughs> hope. All right, let's talk short track. There's something that you do excel at. In fact, you won the late model truck series championship sponsored by LasVegas.net last season. And uh, I think you're racing next week here at the Bull Ring. Is that correct? Is it next week already? I think, I think so. so. Uh, I know they ran uh, Irwindale. This weekend? They ran Irwindale this past weekend. Right. And uh, I haven't heard the results of that. But yeah, the late model truck series, um, it was a lot of fun. We, uh, we didn't finish worse than third, so we were on the podium every race and won some races and won the championship. Look forward to getting out there. And, and that, that keeps me in a seat, so keeps me tuned up a little bit. But it's, uh, it's a little different driving those trucks than an Xfinity car, mainly because of the weight. The Xfinity cars are you know, 34, 3,500-pound cars where the, the truck series – you're around 2650 yeah. and it may not sound like a lot but seven eight hundred pounds is is a lot more to control through and off the corner so um appreciate those guys out at uh, the truck series and uh look forward to getting back out there i, I think the next one's april 9th i, I believe 
You may be right. I, I know they are racing this week, and I didn't know if the trucks uh, series would be involved with that this week or not. But either way, we'll be there to uh, watch you. We're going to have some video as well, and we'll get you an interview there as, as we move forward. And I want to thank you for being our guest once again here. Yeah, you're stealing my outro. So like, <laughs> <laughs> or do it now. All right. You're well, the one cutting it. I am the one cutting it. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Stan, for joining us. I hope you have a good rest of your day. I hey, appreciate you guys. Thanks again to LasVegas.net for all the support. Oh, and I have a hood coming? You've got a hood coming. The hood that was on his car, I get. You get the hood? I'm going to put it right there, I think. That'll be the backdrop for the next one. We'll put the hood in the back instead. Yeah. How about that? There you go. Hood in my hood. All right, Stan. Good talking to you. Have a great day, brother. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye.